If you follow me along on this channel, you know that I am an INTJ introvert through and through. And if you relate at all and you know that you are more on the introverted side of things and you find yourself needing a little bit more time to rest and recharge, especially after any kind of social event, or if you find yourself dreading networking, you're not alone. And I have some tips in this video on how you can network as an introverted business owner. The first thing that I always make sure that I do is prep any kind of recharge time. So I never schedule things back to back and especially when I'm I'm at a big conference and I know I'm going to be seeing a lot of people doing a lot of networking meeting a lot of strangers. I always make sure that I have some time in between sessions or throughout the day to just go back to my hotel room and take a little break. Sometimes I just like to sit on the floor or on, like on the bed and stare up at the ceiling, just literally decompressing in every sense of the word. Another thing that's really important is to have your talking points prepped so that you don't freeze on the spot or God forbid, come across as super awkward, which I've definitely had my fair share of moments like that. So if that happens to you, it's totally fine. <laughs> You'll survive. A couple things to just keep in mind if you would rather not have those awkward moments is make sure that you're prepared to give out things like your website or your shop or your Instagram. Make sure you can tell people about what kind of business you have in a very short, concise way. And also make sure that it's not confusing. Make sure that you can tell them a little bit about how you got started. That's another question I get a lot. Sometimes people will ask me what I'm looking forward to in the conference or what my favorite session was. So I'll just kind of lightly keep that in the back of my mind. And sometimes they'll also ask me what else I'm up to on that week of the conference or during that networking event, you know, like what else I'm up to in my business, what projects I have coming up. And so those are other things that I just kind of have on top to talk about before I show up to an event. I just want to give you a quick little story to show you how scared I was to show up to some events. So I was like invited and people were excited to have me at this event in Atlanta. It was a rising tide meetup back in the day. And I remember I showed up and I literally was like a little bit late just because of Atlanta traffic and whatever. And unfortunately, by the time I got there, it was just starting. And honestly, these things don't start on time anyway. They're usually just kind of networking and mingling for a couple of minutes. But I just looked at my clock and I said, well, it probably already started a couple of minutes ago. I'm just going to wait for like a couple more minutes because like I'll have the courage to walk in then. Guess what? I didn't have the courage and I ended up sitting in my car for an hour building up the courage to go in and it never even happened. Unfortunately, that was not the only time that ever happened. That also happened to me when I moved to Colorado and I was just really nervous to meet everybody and I actually never ended up going and meeting people. So sorry. If that ends up happening to you, you can't muster up the courage to walk into an event like that. Just know you're not alone. That totally happened to me probably more than twice, but I can remember those two times pretty well. One of my favorite things to do anytime I'm a member of a mastermind or showing up to a coaching group or a networking thing or a conference is I like to just hang back and listen. It's really helpful, not only because I get to absorb everything that's happening around me and I don't have to expend a lot of energy trying to talk to people. Like, I don't think any silence is awkward. I just have decided that it's not awkward for me. And so I'm okay just sitting there in silence and listening to what's going on around me, people watching, that kind of thing. And one of the things that I really enjoy about that is I get to be the dumbest person in the room and just kind of absorb everything that's happening. And that's helped me to get ahead a lot in my career, especially as an entrepreneur, because I'm able to then apply the things that I'm learning all about. Because when we're talking, we're not always learning. And when we are listening, we are almost always absorbing new information or ways to say information or present information. And so I just find listening can be a really helpful thing to do when I'm at these events. You guys know I love my makeup. I like to look good and it's because it makes me feel good. When I think I look good, when I feel pretty, I am much more likely to show up confidently and just be really excited to be there. And it doesn't mean that I have to go all out, you know, like for YouTube, I tend to get dressed up and stuff, but it does mean that I'm going to do my hair. I'm going to put a little makeup on. I'm going to put an outfit that is isn't just Lululemon leggings and maybe like a slubby t-shirt. So I'm going to get ready beyond what I would just get ready for maybe like a coaching call or a day in my office where I'm just 
focusing on comfort. Instead, when I go out and network, I still wanna be comfortable. Luckily, there's plenty of ways to do that and still look good. And so that's what I'm aiming for when I'm out and about. Something that really helped me at the beginning of my entrepreneurial journey is setting goals for each event or each networking thing I went to. So I was always trying to maybe start like three conversations that night, or if it was a big conference, I tried to talk to like three people I didn't know over the course of that week. And having those goals just kind of helped me to feel more excited about meeting people and getting out there. And I could actually see like, is this making any kind of progress? And the cool thing is once you get started talking to one person, you know, they have a friend that comes over now you're talking to two people and it can really snowball. You can make some great connections. I remember at an event in Portland, I met this one girl and she had a brand called Calm the Ham and she was a graphic designer. And now she's like, I don't even remember what she has, but you guys would totally know it. It's like this huge notebook. Like she went super viral on Kickstarter a couple months later. And it was really cool because I just met her, you know, getting a coffee at Starbucks at this event and we struck up a conversation. So there's lots of really nice meetings that can happen in that way. Another way that I like to show up as an introvert at these events and show up well is I pretend like I'm a journalist. So I just pretend that I'm going to write a blog post because I don't know, maybe I am. I, I do, I still do that. So maybe I'm going to show up and write a blog post. And my only goal in showing up to the event or the conference is just to write some takeaways and some reviews about what was happening there at that event, who was there, what they were teaching about, that kind of thing. And that's also really helped me to show up because when I make it about the blog post and not about, oh my gosh, what am I going to do? What am I going to say? Like, are people going to think I'm weird and all that stuff? It tends to make the event a lot more enjoyable and fun and a lot more productive. And then finally, just remember, you're just building this one step at a time. You don't need to schedule a bunch of events in a row. You also don't need to just schedule one per quarter or something like that. It's important to just find the event and the people that you think you would align with that will elevate your business to the next level and that make you feel good because those are the types of relationships that are going to build the backbone of your business because I can tell you that it's, yes, very important to create products and sell them, but it's the relationships and the networking that I've done in my business that have built it faster and further than anything I could have done by myself. And if that's not encouragement enough for you to get out there, I don't know what is. So save this video for your next networking or conference type event, even if it's virtual. And we'll be back next week talking all about digital products and something you definitely don't wanna do. So make sure you're subscribed, that way you don't miss that video. And follow me on Instagram, Christina Scalera, is my handle. We're almost at 10,000 followers. I would love to have you when we have a little party to celebrate that milestone. I'll see you there. Bye everyone.